Amen. What a wonderful and powerful testimony of what God can do in a person's life. You see, when we have a personal encounter with Jesus, you can't help it. Your life will be transformed. Today, we're going to continue in our series, Redeeming the Time. And in Ephesians chapter 5, you know, we are learning how to live a life that is in Christ. First, we learned that we need to read and study the Word of God. Now, and the second, part, second point is that we need to be filled with the Spirit. And so, have you, did, did you practice, you know, praying and asking God to fill you this week? And how was it? Now, let me begin with a question. Have you drank your eight cups of Holy Spirit today? <laughs> Do you know that even though our body is made up 60% of water, we still need eight glasses of water a day to be healthy. In the same way, even though the Holy Spirit is already in dry, living inside you, you still need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because it's not about how much Holy Spirit you have. It's about how much the Holy Spirit has of you. 100%. 75%. 50%. Does the Holy Spirit, see the question is, does the Holy Spirit have all of you? Amen. Now, we're going to talk about, since we're talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, the next question to talk to us is, how do I know that I'm spirit-filled? Right? And now, so we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse, the, verse 18 to 21. Nine, especially pay attention to 19 to 21, because that's about what Paul says right after he commands us to be filled with the Spirit. Okay, verse 18, it says, Do not, go, do not get drunk with wine. But that is, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, pay attention to verse 9 to 21. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reference for Christ. Amen. So in the NIV translation of verse 19, it says, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music, playing instruments from your heart to the Lord. So simply put, the result of being Spirit-filled manifests in your speaking and submitting. Now in the Greek, we have, in the verse 19 to 21, there are four particles. Speak, sing, giving thanks, and submit. And if you know grammar, you know that particles never stands by themselves. They are always attached to a verb. And the verb here they're attached to is be filled with the Spirit. Now, can you repeat after me? Be filled with the Spirit. So how do I know that I'm filled with the Spirit? The answer is found in these four particles. And these are the visible signs that are manifest in our vertical and horizontal relationship. So on your, it's all about how you speak and how do you submit to one another, to God. So the first point is, a spirit filled. So, what is a spirit filled speech? Isang pasasalita na puno ng espiritu. Now, the first, you know, from Acts chapter two, we know that the f that the first evidence of a spirit filled person is speaking in tongues, speaking in a spiritual language. Okay, because the Holy Spirit has control of the person's tongue. So you will be speaking in a language that is, you know, that is uh, 
not that is full of the Spirit. That is, they're careful about what they say. So you see, in the when you're filled with when your spirit fill, your speech will be empty of anger, ang- anger will be empty of malice, gossip, rage. It will be filled with love, with kindness, with patience, right? With faith, the fruit of the spirit. That's how you know that you're spirit filled. And the term addressing, speak, or the term addressing or speaking in verse 19, okay, to one another, it comes from the verb in Greek, lalao, which simply means to make a sound, to break the silence. And off it forms the word chattered or babbled. Possibly like when a child is trying to speak learning to speak, and it makes those noises, sounds, or the chirping of the bird in the secular Greek, okay? So this is, just so lalao means making a sound. And spirit-filled believers, they make sweet and beautiful sound that is pleasing to God's ear. So here, when, and in the text, in you follow verse 19, he says, addressing one another in psalm and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord from your heart. So singing is a part of a spirit-filled person. So this speaking, it's also about singing, about making sounds. Beautiful sounds that will rise to God because it pleases Him. Why would you have, why would you be singing and making joyful noises to the Lord? Because you're excited. When you have a personal encounter with God, when the Holy Spirit is filled you to overflowing, joy bubbles up. Excite, you're, you're excited. You are charged. Your s- sounds, songs just bubble up, burst out of you. And, 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 it's so, um, and I'm so glad it's not about the ability to sing, you know, because I can't carry a tune. But it doesn't mean that it will stop me from singing to the Lord. I still want to burst out. Sometimes there's times that I will just burst out in songs. So I'm so glad that God is not looking to my ability to sing. God is looking into my heart. Am I worshiping him? Am I singing to him from the depth of my heart? Am I coming to him? Because, you know, the Holy Spirit is filling me, and I just had to burst out because I'm so excited that I have God with me, that I just want to burst out in song to him, you know. In Psalms, verse, uh, sorry, in Psalms chapter 40, verse 3, it says, he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. May all will see, many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. There's a song, a new song that bursts out in your mouth, a fresh song from the heart. And this is a song that God has put in you. See, when you worship without your heart being involved, that's religion. You're just singing the words. True worship comes from the heart because it is out of love for God. That talks about relationship. That's why John chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Can you repeat after me? We must worship in spirit and in truth. And you know, if you don't worship and make music from the heart, you're cheating God. So, that 
And then in verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 5, why do we sing? Why do we make music to God? In verse 20 it says, giving thanks always. It's out of a heart, a thanksgiving heart, a grateful heart. Giving thanks always and be everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus, you're full of Jesus, full of the Spirit, you can't help but being thankful to the Lord. So that is your attitude. Talks about your attitude, your gratefulness and thankfulness towards God. Now, Thanksgiving, you know, is a product of a spirit-filled heart. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be standing here. You wouldn't be watching online. It is because of Jesus that we give thanks. And it is because of Jesus that we have no reason not to give thanks. Because without Jesus, we would still under the power of darkness. We will still be under the penalty of sin. It is because of what Jesus did that we are set free, that we can have a relationship with God, that we can be singing with joy, with hope. And it's because of Jesus that we can give thanks we can have a spirit-filled life. Amen? So spirit-filled people sing spiritual songs. In the ESV ver Bible version and in the NIV version, it says songs from the Spirit. So what does it mean, songs from the Spirit? So we're going to take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 to 15. It's, Paul says, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praises with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. So speaking in tongues is another evidence of being spirit-filled. And in in the Bible, in spe in, especially in the book of Acts, it gives accounts of individuals speaking in tongues. And it was practiced especially by Paul. So what is speaking in tongues and what is it for? So it has a private and a public function. So there's private tongue and public tongue. So we're going to be talking about private tongue today. So what is speaking in tongues? It's a heavenly language. Ito, itoi isan makalachit na wika. Okay. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, it says, For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to man, but to God. For no one understands him, for he utters mysteries in the Spirit. So when you're speaking in tongues, it is actually Holy Spirit empowering you, enabling you to speak to God. So this is not an earthly language that we could understand, but a spiritual language. I like, and, and it was explained to me that it was an angelic language. You know, and this is the deep speaking to the deep, your spirit speaking to God. And this is a, you know, and God enables you, provides to speak to him. And in the public tongue, God will provide an interpretation for what you're talking about. But we will talk about it in another time. So, we're go so here, let's take a look at what Paul, continue to take a look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. If I speak in the tongue of man and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. But if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to 
We move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. See, at the bottom of it, it's love. Love for God. Love for one another. That's how you know that you're full of the Spirit. And here, Paul says that, you know, that heavenly places and heavenly realms is used several times in the book of Ephesians. So this phrase is translated to eporaneus, which means heavenly or celestial, as the sphere of spiritual activity. This phrase is actually used 20 times throughout the New Testament. But Paul here in Ephesus uses it in a very particular way. He's emphasizing, adding emphasis, emphasis and meaning to the word. Simply put, Eporianos is not the location, is not where, out somewhere out there, but it's actually pressing in inside you. See, when the end of the, at, at the end of each service, we always have that declaration, may your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So whatever that's going on in the heavenly realms is a reality on earth in this moment. So salvation is heaven in me today and me in heaven tomorrow. Heaven is in you. That's why you can speak. In t you could speak in tongues. You have a thanksgiving heart. You're carrying the presence of God. And your spirit filled. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it says, so Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit in, within you, whom you have from God. You are not your own. That's why last week we talked about emptying and filling, because you're not your own anymore. You're letting, so that's, that's what the question we've been asking all from last week to this week is, how much of you does the Holy Spirit have? Is it all? Are you letting the Holy Spirit have all of you? Second reason why we speak in tongues. What is speaking in tongues? Number two is that it is talking to God. Itoi makikipak usap sa Dios. It's a prayer language, spiritual language that only God understands. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to man but to God, for no one understands him, for he utters mysteries in the Spirit. And in verse 14 to 15, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? So this is a, you know, a lot of people ask this question, even Paul. Ask the question, so what is the outcome if I pray, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful? Am I, do I, is it, does that mean my mind is empty? What am I to do? In here, listen to what he, what his answer is in verse 15. He says, what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit but I will sing praise with my mind also. So the answer is not to stop. Oh, because I'm scared. What if, you know, I don't know what I'm praying. Paul says, don't worry. Pray in the spirit, but pray with your mind also. Sing in the spirit and sing in, the, in your mind also. 
So he's determined to be doing both. So it's a willingness to pray and a choice to continue to pray. And number three, this is the most important one as well. It edifies yourself. It is self-edification when you pray in tongue because the one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself, but the one who prophesies builds up the church in 1 Corinthians 14, 4. But you, beloved, building yourself up to in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit in Jude 20. Now, building up might sound very grandiose. It's like, you, you know, you're, it's for you. But it's actually edifying means that you are enlightening yourself. You are improving yourself. You know, so praying in tongues actually gives you new revelations of God. It increases your faith in the Lord. So let's, you know, if you've, last week we prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you have started speaking in tongues, I encourage you to continue to pray, to sing, to just enjoy yourself. Because this, you know, this is like a secret coat between you and God. Even the enemy doesn't understand. Only God understands. Isn't it wonderful? And listen to Paul. He's, he's one that loves to speak in tongues. It's so important to him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, he says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Don't forget, Paul is he's well-versed in the Bible. He's logical. He's reasonable, highly educated. Paul prays in tongue more than any of us. Praying in tongues, if praying in tongues is so important to Paul, praying in tongues is important to all of us. It's something that we need to learn from him. So let's take a look at, remember, being spirit-filled means that your speech, your speaking will be different. You'll be singing with joy a new song to the Lord, you'll be speaking in tongues. And the second evidence of knowing that how, how do you know that you're being, your spirit filled? A, you have a spirit filled submission. Isang pasuko na puno ng espiritu. So this is your relationship with one another submitting to each other. You know, submission has a very bad rap because of, in the English, because you're thinking, oh, I'm lowering myself under another person. But it's not like that in the Bible. And it's not like that when your spirit fell. Because Holy Spirit is a spirit of unity. It's a spirit of peacemaking. It unites people. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, it says, I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of calling, worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. See, unity happens when we submit to one another. And why do you submit? You're submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. See, you're not submitting to a person. You're submitting to the Christ that lives in that person. When your spirit fills, when the Holy Spirit has all of you, you know what that means? That means you're saying, God, 
I don't want to follow my way. I don't want to be thinking my old sinful thoughts. I don't want to be acting out of my usual habit. I want to follow your will for my life. That is submission. You are submitting yourself under the will of God, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit that lives in the other person. So it's out of reverence for Christ. Basically, it's really about Jesus because that is the motivation. Out of reverence for Christ, again, it is from your heart, not from outside environment, outside forces, but from the inner transformation because now Holy Spirit lives in you. So submission is choosing to come under the covering of God. And when it is done for Christ, it is a sacred and spiritual thing. So submission is putting yourself, be, putting other people before yourself, thinking about them instead of about yourself, putting their, you know, what God's will and desire above your own. When you're filled with the Spirit, submission to others comes easy and natural because you are Spirit-filled. And Paul explains it in verse 22. He used the re relationship between husband and wife, slaves and children, Okay, so, he can, so this submission, he used the idea between a husband and wife. So verse 22, it says, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. So, you know, as husbands and wives, you understand, living with each other, sometimes it's not easy. So here, spirit-filled husbands and wives, they don't insist on doing things their own way. Un they understand each other. They're willing to submit to one another because they're not controlling, they're not possessive or manipulative. That's how you know that your spirit fell. Verse 22 to 24, it says, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. See, it's not about the person. It's about Jesus. Verse 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, we so also wives should submit in everything to their husband. Now, that doesn't mean husband do not submit yourself to the wives. You should spirit-filled husbands and wives submit to each other. Amen? Because when you submit to each other, it's out of love for each other. That talks about relationship. It's out of reference to Christ. Because you're giving that, you're giving that control. Remember last week we talked about it. When you're, being, you're spirit filled, when your spirit, Holy Spirit have all of you, you're giving control to the Holy Spirit in your life. And when you give Holy Spirit control of your life, you can't help it. You will think of the other person above you. You will think about their needs, their wants. Putting yourself under, you know, your needs behind theirs is so easy. And it's loving. That's why you submit. And that's how, you know, people ask, how do I know I'm spirit-filled? You know when your heart just can't help it. You're just bursting with joy for the Lord. You're just, you just want to sing for God. You're, the way you talk is not full of anger. You're, the way you talk is not full of malice or gossip. Or, you know, or even swearing bad words. Your speech is filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Filled of love, full of kindness, compassion. And also, you will think of yourself less and other people more. 
That's how you know your spirit will. Amen? So let me pray for you. Why don't you all stand wherever you are? Why don't you stand up? You know, Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Lord, I don't want to be doing things my way. I want to be doing things your way, Lord Father. So right now, Lord Father, continue to fill me, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit flow through me unobstructed, Lord Father. If there's any anger, any fear, any worldly that I've allowed in, Lord Father, that is blocking your, your, your flow, Lord Father, remove it right now in the name of Jesus. I want nothing, nothing between me and you, Lord Father. I want my relationship with you to be clear of all these ungodly things, Lord Father. So Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Fill my heart, Lord Father, with you, Lord Father. Fill my heart with joy. Fill my heart with hope, Lord Father. Fill my heart, Lord Father, with the reverence for you, Lord Father, my King, my Lord, my Savior. Thank you for everything that you have done. And thank you that because of you, I can have relationship with God the Father. I can have loving relationship with the people around me, with my family, with my friends, with my spouse, with my children, with the people who hurt me. Thank you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. 
is here. God is here. You know, if you have headache, muscle cramp, bleeding gums, and hypertension, God wants to heal you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, indeed, Lord, your God, your Jehovah Rafi, God that heals. Right now, Lord Father, you know, with all the bad news, we, there's so many, so much tension, Lord Father. Lord, right now, we just release your shalom over us, Lord Father. All the headaches from hearing all these bad news, Lord Father, from being anxious, from being worried, Lord Father, we command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, those muscle cramps, Lord Father, we relax those muscles, Lord Father. Take away the pain, Lord Father. And Lord, we pray that you stop the bleeding of those gums, Lord Father. Lord, restore health, Lord Father. Restore health, Lord Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we command those blood pressure to come down, Lord Father. The level to come down, Lord Father. Lord, even though everything that goes around us is, is not it's not good news, Lord Father, even bad news, Lord Father. But Lord, we can hold on to you to give us peace. We can hold on to you to know that you are in control. So right now, we declare all those symptoms, all those sicknesses are gone, Lord Father, in the name of Jesus. They are healed by you because you are a God that gives us peace. You are a God that gives us hope. You are a God that gives us joy. Thank you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 So, thank you for joining us. We will see you next week online. So before we end, let's have that declaration, shall we? And say it with conviction. Let your heaven come and your will be done. Amen. Have a nice week. Bye.